right, welcome. Hey, we're here in Lincoln Hall on the campus of Northwestern University's Law School, and I'm here with Dean Carter. Dean, how you doing, sir? Great to uh, see yeah. you. Really good to see you. Hey, yeah. Thanks for being open to sharing today. I mean, yeah. you were formerly the Chief People Officer at Patagonia, and now you're the Chief People and Purpose Officer at Guild Education. Can you share a little bit about that title, number one, and yeah. you know what your hopes are. We're at Talreos, the Talent Analytics Leadership Roundtable and Economic Opportunity Summit. That's a lot. It's, it's a mouthful. Yeah. And obviously yeah. what we talk about over these two days that we're together relates to purpose, relates to economic opportunity. Mm -hmm. So with that introduction, tell us a bit about it. Thanks. You know, when I took the job at Guild, the title originally was the Chief People Officer. And I started to learn, the more I learned quickly at Guild what the company was actually doing, which is to work with large companies and look inside their own workforce and see this incredible talent pool that is available mm -hmm. instead of going externally, like how can you look at this, like all these people are trying to raise their hand and how can you help me move forward in my career? So what Guild does is actually help people raise in their career, period, for big companies or any, any company. And I think that's what I've been trying to do all my life. That is my own personal purpose, is to help people do better at work in their life and careers. So I went back to the CEO and I said, I think, I think my title here is Chief People and Purpose Officer. And she goes, you're right. And wow. immediately Rachel said, yes, you're now Chief People and Purpose Officer, which is true. So my own personal purpose, the purpose of the company, are so incredibly aligned. And I, I don't know if this is a unique to Guild, and I think that more and more I heard that this head of HR for Cisco is now the Chief People and Purpose Officer for Cisco. And it's catching on that, you know, as the Chief People Officer, you're actually driving typically close to the purpose of the company. And most of us join companies because we have a high degree of alignment with purpose, and Guild just happens to have like an incredibly close alignment with something I've been doing my entire life. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing. I mean, I'm just, my mind is a little bit blown on this in such a positive way because I'm thinking of myself as a worker in that type of organization. That's a mm -hmm. big reframe around the value that you're delivering and what you're bringing to me and resourcing me to live out my purpose as yeah. an individual, at, collectively as an organization. So how has it been received by those within Guild? Well, I think when I first announced it, this is going to be my new role, I actually put it on LinkedIn and said, this is my new role. It is the highest viewed post I've ever put on LinkedIn. Wow. And I think there's a big opportunity for us to rethink the entire people stack mm -hmm. and the work that we're doing and the work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So my work is, is not just people, but in alignment with them and purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think post COVID, a lot of people woke up and said, hey, I don't wanna just work for a company that's either making someone else super rich or just, or even spending my time on something just as a job that I wake up and do and I'm not interested in done do something that is meaningful. So I think our role now is to connect people with purpose, whatever that is at the company. And I think that we're trying to even think of, and we can talk about this in a moment, all the roles in the people stack, like how do we keep them focused on the right things? Like internal mobility. And so if you have that, you need to have a head of internal mobility and opportunity. You think about career agility and outcomes versus performance management. I now have a head of agility and outcomes instead of a head of performance management really thinking about the work that needs to be done across the entire life cycle versus these segmented silos. I own this part of the cycle, I own this part of the cycle. And that's really a cool thing about Guild and it allows me to rethink the entire stack mm -hmm. about how do I just drive better outcomes for people in their careers and work and job and how do I attach that to their purpose? And it's allowing me to completely rethink how we think about our roles that we do in HR. The second highest one posting, the person who accepted the chief opportunity officer, which is a unique job. This job reports to me on our people team and is in the business and drives internal mobility inside Guild and external mobility for our partners that we work with. So it's a unique role that reports both to the business and to the people team instead wow. of just to the people team or just to the business. So what we're learning inside Guild, we apply externally. What we learn externally, we apply internally. So it's this flywheel of learning between both the business and the people team. And I don't know how many jobs exist like that where you have a business leader that sits on the people team 
and a people team member list sits in the business team. No, I'm thinking that and I can't point to one and what I love about what you're saying, and there's a lot, and I cite a Chinese proverb quite often, mm -hmm. the beginning of wisdom is calling things by their right names. Right. And what I see and hear you doing is say, hey, what are we trying to achieve? Yeah. And then creating naming conventions and activities that align with that as opposed to taking these this legacy mindset and it's legacy, a legacy language, mindset yeah which we have to uproot I mean, right, you right. Know, the, the people are different the situation is different I and mean, with disruptions uh, we can talk AI and robotic automation you know all we want but at the end of the day we're serving human beings within this environment if we yeah. don't have intention around it and yeah. you know what are we doing so I celebrate what you're doing you want to say something yeah, more I do the way yeah. you mentioned the word wisdom mm -hmm. and that's another change that we've made you know the world is changing rapidly mm -hmm. and so there's in terms of how we're going to approach training and development and learning and the whole thing is changing so the other thing that we've done is it's not that there's there's so much content and information that's out there. The access to not just learning, but the access to knowledge is incredibly important. So we've changed that structure to the head of learning and knowledge, and I want to add wisdom. So you mentioned as a Chinese proverb, calling it like it is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, training now will be ubiquitous and completely available with AI. So yeah. content, career pathways, all those. But creating knowledge mm -hmm. as a result of that needs a human engaged in it. And moving from knowledge to wisdom, which is the ethical and moral application of knowledge, mm -hmm. I do want to drive that and call that learning knowledge and wisdom. Again, I love it. And I also want to call out and highlight that point is that I don't see AI delivering wisdom anytime soon. No time soon. That's a human that's thing. That's a human thing, right? Yeah. And that's so a human that thing. celebrates what we can contribute within organizations, within teams. And yeah. if you're calling that out, now you have an opportunity. Again, I'm as one of your employees yeah. thinking, okay, I can provide that. You yeah. know, we have all these tools, but I still have this unique contribution to make. I mean, that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It humanizes. Yeah, it the does. Experience. And I think we have to realize there's always going to be human part. Technology is going to do a lot of things and I think having a human engage in the process. We see that in the work that Guild does around career mobility. Mm -hmm. When we work with our partners, we don't just throw a bunch of learning content at people and here's all the things you need to do. We sit them in front of a screen and they learn a lot of things. I think what we do, and it's hard to scale in a lot of companies, but we have, oh my gosh, almost a hundred coaches on site. And what we do is a lot of understanding kind of these are human beings we're dealing with and they have life issues. They may not know how to interview. This may be the first time they've ever, ever had access to high quality education. They may not have the social understanding of the jobs and work that's available. Mm -hmm. So we provide each of them with a coach mm -hmm. and, and two types of coach, kind of entry level and then kind of an ongoing coach to keep them in the process and engaged. So you can't AI the coach. This is a human who goes. Some are trying. I know. But. <laughs> you can't, I know. You, what you can't, like, I understand this, what you're dealing with today. I understand that you had childcare issues today. I understand that you had to go to work instead of mm -hmm. studying today. How do I keep you in the process? And we measure persistence. Mm -hmm. Like, does the person, how many people, when they start, do they finish the program? And uh, Guild doesn't get paid till they finish, not when they start. So we make sure that we get measured on, on really strong outcomes. And one other thing I want to mention is we think about AI and the impact on jobs. I've created another job within, so I've got her, someone in charge of mobility, which is how to get from here to here and eliminate all the barriers that come with doing that. And that's the head of opportunity. The new role is head of agility and outcomes. And this one is thinking about how to crush it in the job you're doing today. And I need them to be a futurist and understand as a result of AI and other technology, which jobs people in Guild are doing today that are going to go away tomorrow? And how do I create agility in this particular person so they don't wake up two years from now and don't have a job? And I looked him in the eye and I said, your job is to make sure that two years from now we're ready for change and this person has the agility to move from here to here in another job. So I need someone focused on mobility, how to get from here to here, and someone focused on agility to keep you here to here in case that's your role. I just got to chill. <laughs> that is unbelievably needed. And the fact that you're bringing that to life proactively, I just want to celebrate that. The uh, traditional things, things we yeah. begin in head of performance management, head of training, all these 
roles that we have accepted is like, oh, I need a head of performance management. I need this. Don't solve for the problems that need to be solved according to Chinese wisdom. Like, yeah. call it like it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm just going to throw this out there. I'm reframing myself and I'm creating something called my future of work for that simple reason. How mm -hmm. can I, as an individual, proactively understand the disruptions that are going to happen in my role and in my career? And it sounds like there's a collaborative thinking partner, a coach to help you navigate that. The human being. That's wonderful. Human to that. human. Human to human, social capital. I think about Rob Cross, Michael Arena, Amy, exactly. Amy, Greg Pryor. It's yeah. like, it's so underappreciated. It and is. if we can facilitate that connection as leaders, good mm -hmm. things are going to happen. So and you just mentioned two of my big heroes, Rob Cross yeah. and Greg Pryor. Yeah. He's a great friend and yeah. I love the work that they're doing. Oh, I love it too. Yeah. No, yeah. celebrate them. So as we start to wrap up, how can people learn more about you and what you're doing there at Guild? Well, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Yeah. So I, have a regular monthly topic that we have. We have a, called a CHO consortium. I'm kind of not crazy about the name consortium, but that's the best <laughs> name we could come up with. And uh, you can join that and you can have access to conversations with other people who are thinking about the future of work. We pick a topic, like the most recent topic was uh, we, we need more HR, heads of HR and people with people experience on boards. Mm -hmm. If you're on a board, let us know how do we move this and make a movement. I'll have a couple videos on that. And we, I'm really trying to create forward thinking conversations about our role, how it's evolved, how it's changed and how we need to continue to influence. I think there's been a change like we, financial capital used to be the conversation that we had mm -hmm. and the CFO was very important of course, and still is now human capital is the conversation that's at every board. And I really think the role of the CHR, I've been saying, we talked about having a seat at the table for a long time. And I think we've had a seat at the table and they've been like, use it well. Now, after post COVID, DEI, strategy, human capital, all these, we have a piece of the table. And Michelle Obama said, if you have a seat or a piece of the table, you damn well better use it well or get the hell out and let someone else get in there who's going to make a difference. <laughs> so it. that's my message is like really start to embrace the work that needs to be done using um, what are first design principles, like break it down into the work. Let's, um, let's be strong advocates for this in this moment and lift because there's a big expectation for us to do this. We can't. Don't waste a good crisis. We just came out of a massive crisis. And uh, how do we make sure that the organizations and the companies that we're working for as technology increases, as we start to come into you know, economic challenges that are happening now, how do we make sure we remember the human beings that are involved in this? And that is our job every single day. Every single day. Dean. Thank you for sharing. What a pleasure. Continue your awesome work and love to learn more about the consortium as well. So again, Great. thank you for sharing. Thank you for making this possible. I really appreciate it. Of course. All right, be well. <laughs>